Hi everyone! Uh, today Alexis, my friend, who is a makeup artist, is going to be showing me and you how to do scars. Um, she's worked on films and TV and stuff and um, so we'll get on with Alexis it. Alexis is going to do a scar on my eyebrow. Yes, I am. And um, we'll let you know what we're using. There's loads of stuff here. I'm actually going to take a photo. Loads of um, really exciting makeup y stuff. So I will put a picture of that in this blog post as well. Well, to begin with, I will be using third degree. It is basically a silicone compound. Is this it as well? Yep, and it comes in two pots. One's A and one's B. Right. And you mix them together and it reacts to itself and hardens for a silicone cut. And we're going to put it over the eyebrow here. It needs to be a hard surface. Otherwise, when she, if you put it here, when she smiles, it would break apart. Okay. So and are you going to mix them on this dish? This little dish here, which is from Ikea. Oh, lovely. Which is really handy and you can get them in, in little packs of five. Oh, that's great. So and you're using thing. a little metal spatula. Oh. I've got one like this from the eye mats. Take a little bit from the A pot. Literally onto like my... a pea size amount. I'm actually going to lift that up. Can you see that? I'm mixing up the, the pea sized A and the, the pea sized B. And mix it in good and thorough. Use the metal spatula oh, to, to it blend it on or cotton buds. Oh yeah, with pointy little, little ones points. for Muji, which are excellent. Or of course, like we've got uh, some little very clever. cocktail sticks. Yummy. And this this third degree basically spend is it about five minutes to harden. I use a little bit of um, IPA, which I've just got in a little squirty bottle. Because I need a clean surface on your eyebrow. Oh, she's going to clean so the foundation out of my eyebrow. She has makeup on already, so I'm just going to... So we're going to apply it to the skin. And obviously it's still quite malleable, so just very gently something good on and it will stick onto... It won't run either because it's starting to thicken. So I've basically just put a thin layer over there and then I've blended over the edges. This is bruised powder. Get a teeny little bit onto your finger and it just does a bruise that's just happened. So let's put a, let's put it in. Just a teeny little bit. Okay, so it's... And it, it is just literally just to, you know, like if you've just, just been banged. whacked, just yeah. literally just been bat battered. And then you can sort of just press it into the skin. And it's just so easy, you can do it in seconds. Oh, that is really good. And it has like a, because it's a powder, it has a slight uh, dippling effect. Yeah. Like your capillaries have, you know, been burst a little bit. So it's not too overpowering, but it's what yeah, a, yeah. a first little knock to the head yeah. would be. So let's get back to the scar. And because it's hardened a little bit on our forehead, to create the cut, you just drag the very sharp end of the spatula through the cut. Leave that for a little while as well. It'll harden a bit. Once, once it's hardened, um, and you're quite happy with the the shape and everything and the cut that you've that you've put through. Um, you powder it uh, with just translucent powder. So just very gently pat it on, make it matte. And with the uh, the line that you the actual indentation that you made before. Now that it's been powdered over, you can go over and make that line again. You can even because it's now hardened as well, you can slightly, with your spatula, edge it out so it's the skin sort of coming out a little bit to so make it a bit deeper. And for this next stage, I'll be using my Skin Illustrator palette. 
activated with my IPA. So at the beginning I'll be using this dark red and a little bit of light red as well. And these brushes I'm using are literally just artist brushes. Because I don't want to use nice I don't want yeah I don't want to use my makeup brushes for special effects because they get ruined. And it's literally just putting the red into the cut. And because it's skin illustrator as well, it'll be it'll like blend into the skin and it can seep underneath the third degree cut that you've made. And it is just literally building up the colour. Yeah, these look exciting. These, which I keep in okay, three pots in a plastic bag, and I'll have to get them out now. Because even though you've sealed them so well, they always they leak. And they they're look always sticky. Leaking. So they're, these are. This is dried blood. Oh, I love this stuff. And these are grey little pots as well by um, the brand Makeup. Oh yeah. Um, because they're just so handy. And so what's this one? That's um Bloody, Bloody Real, Real Blood H D. And, that and then one. this one is a dark version of that one. Oh okay, so this is the light and this is the dark. Okay, so what's she gonna use? Well normally I would I think I would probably use a little bit of the quick dry because okay. it's near the eye, I don't want it to dripping be dripping too yeah. much. With a cotton wool bud I'm just literally Took the top off. Because this is quick dry, it'll dry quite quickly and it'll clot, look like clotted blood, which is good. So it's like a cut that's been there for a good like a couple of hours or so. Yeah. And because of gravity, you like to think that there'll be quite a big crusty bit of blood around your eyebrow. Lovely. So this is where can really, at the bottom of the cut, you can really make it all clogged up because it would have dribbled a bit, dribbled a bit, and then just dried. I'm using a little bit of, a little bit of my black as well, just to create a bit of depth. This one here is a a yellow wound gel. Which when you when you have smaller cuts, you know you get that little bit of sort of clear liquid that yeah. comes out. Something something like this, you wouldn't get that because it's you know it's a bit too deep looking. Yeah. But because it's quick dry as well, you can use this. Oh yeah, look at that. I don't want to tip it out, but can you see that? It's kind of. You can use this to make it a bit more wetter. Like if you're using the. The quick dry blood you can add a bit of this just to keep it shininess so it looks a bit more a bit more fresh. And literally that is pretty much it really. I can't wait to see it. I'll show the um we'll show some of the runny blood. Okay. Just to show the effect and see and how different it is and how it runs. Because this is the the dried the quick dried blood that I've used, and you can see it's already congealed. You know, it's it's not ran into our eye or anything, which is great if you don't want that effect. This is the bloody real uh, dark version of makeup, and I'll show you how quickly it runs compared to the quick dry. If you toss your head slightly towards towards me, it so it doesn't go straight in your eye. And see it'll run. Uh, it'll run quite a lot and it'll keep on going as well because it's so it's that runny blood really texture. really good for literally just happened. Yeah. Dramatic. And you see it's still going as well compared to my my quick dry that I used. Yeah this which I didn't one even will feel just keep going on, on whereas I can feel that. Yeah for the quick dry is really good for. And this would be good for kind of bleeding noses and. Yeah. Okay. Oh, I can even see that reflecting the camera. Well, thank you so much for 
bringing everything and showing us. And maybe next time we could do a video on how it would look the next day. Yeah, that would oh, be in great. five days time and we could do more of a crusty, crusty opening. <laughs> yeah. And because it's knifed as well, it'd be a teeny bit more bruising. Yeah, that sounds fantastic. Crusty opening. <laughs> Thank you and um, we'll see you soon. Bye bye.